Welcome to Da'a Headlines. I'm Anthony Carlisle. Thank you for joining us. Coming up in the show today, Siji again partners with Remote Area Medical to host a huge free clinic, this time in Sacramento. Yesterday was Tomb Sweeping Day in Taiwan. We joined Siji volunteers at a local primary school where they taught children how to enjoy an eco-friendly festival. And in our series on Taiwan's fading traditions, we find out how one woman from the hacker community is marketing a village specialty, pickled vegetables stored in a bottle. Siji volunteers in Northern California once again worked with Remote Area Medical, also known as RAM, to hold a large-scale free clinic at the California Expo Center in Sacramento. The four-day event helped over 10,000 residents who could otherwise not afford medical treatment. Among the volunteers was gynecologist John W. Candy, who decided to devote his last day as a doctor to the free clinic before he retires. Having been a doctor for more than 50 years, Dr. John Candy decides to spend his last day before retirement at Tiji's free clinic. We certainly see many people need, uh, without insurance need help. Yeah, well, you see the thousands of people still standing out in line outside mm -hmm. waiting to get in. Uh, you know that that's true. With the poverty gap and lack of health care resources in the United States, it is up to Tsuji and charity organizations alike to help those in need. Internal medicine doctor Keith Doram skips lunch for two days so he could treat more patients, while oral department doctor Kelvin Lee is here to volunteer with his family. Experience, and I wanted our kids to, to um, get an idea of what it's like to, you know, be in the you know, medical profession, providing health care to people. California CG volunteers are once again working with Remote Area Medical in Sacramento to provide a variety of medical treatment to those who cannot afford it. Our brothers are really wonderful and they manage to teach me the basics in a short period of time. I think starting with the basics, I'll be able to learn a lot. A patient from last year signed up to volunteer this year and is relishing in the joy of giving. Last year, as soon as I got out of this area as a patient, I went and signed up as a volunteer because I wanted to be here the next year, which is this year, and I'm here. <laughs> and I'm going to be here any other year. Over 10,000 people received medical treatment over the four-day free clinic. If this didn't, wasn't here, I wouldn't be able to have that. You know, my friend wouldn't have been able to get her tooth pulled. I wouldn't be able to get my teeth cleaned. A lot of these people wouldn't be able to get any of the help that they have. Local residents not only receive medical service, but also the love and care of volunteers from around the globe. Students on their spring break helped set up the venue for the four-day free clinic in Sacramento. Putting together 100 mobile dental chairs and other equipment would not have been possible without the help of the college students. After a free clinic in Oakland City's medical mission arrives next at the California Expo Center in Sacramento. There are 100 mobile dental chairs and other equipment to set up. Some teachings, though first-timers, are quick learners and help assemble the free clinic site. <laughs> Apart from students from the nearby University of California in Davis, a few also came from Berkeley University and San Jose University, more than 100 kilometers away from Sacramento, to give a helping hand. It's a kind of enjoyment in life because the society provides for us and we then reciprocate back to our community. This is not a job that can be done by one person. It requires teamwork to complete this task. A volunteer couple, Chen Guozhang and Li Cui, took leave from work to participate in the event. The pair say they're deeply moved by Ji and want to spread the love to those in need. It's like a workout plus a setup. It is really good. I'm moved. It's good exercise and we gain Dharma joy. There's so many people participating. We sweat it out and we are not tired. Volunteers, young and old, all release in the joy of giving and also create a happy and positive environment for the arriving patients. 
A patient from Hualien in Taiwan, 68-year-old Miss Zhu, suddenly lost vision in her left eye the night before Chinese New Year's Eve. At Suji General Hospital, she was seen by Vice Superintendent Dr. Wang Li Xin, who had treated a similar case many years ago and suspected Miss Zhu was suffering from cytomegalovirus. After two days of antibiotics, her vision returned. The eyes are said to be the windows to the soul, but what would happen if you suddenly could not see? This is exactly what 68-year-old Miss Drew discovered on the nights before Chinese New Year. I couldn't see anything. When I went like this, I didn't see anything. Miss Drew's family quickly brought her to the Hualien City Hospital, where she was diagnosed with an inflammation of the optic nerve. Treated, Miss Drew's vision returned. However, two to three weeks following, her vision once again left her, and she also came down with multiple infections. At that time, we found out that she had diabetes, a UTI, and her white cell count was also quite high. Dr. Wang Lixing of the Infectious Disease Department had Ms. Zhu undergo a CT scan after which she found out that she had a strange growth in her right sinus caused by a fungal infection. However, after treatment, Ms. Zhu's condition did not improve. From my experience, for those with optic nerve inflammation, if it was caused by an infection, we'll assume leptospirosis or cytomegalovirus to be the root cause. Dr. Wang continued to look for the origin of Ms. Drew's illness, and after he gave her antibiotics to treat cytomegalovirus, Ms. Drew's vision returned. Later, with the combined efforts of the ENT, optometry, and infectious disease departments, her health was able to make a full recovery by the end of March. <laughs> Thanks to the care of this doctor, another patient finds health once more. Over in Darlin Siji Hospital, doctors made some delicious noodles with soybean sauce to express their gratitude towards the nursing staff. The nurses said the noodles were very nice and helped take the edge off the day. Putting on aprons, these doctors are making noodles with soybean paste for their hard-working nursing staff. Our nursing staff work really hard to take care of patients. We doctors want to cook for them and let them feel the warmth of this big family so we can work hard together to serve our patients. To make the delicious soybean paste noodles, the doctors scrape the thick stems off the broccoli. For many of the medics, this is their first cooking experience. Most of them find dicing vegetables a hard task. But after some discussion and hard work, the noodles are finally done. <laughs> the noodles with soybean paste look very delicious, but how do they taste? This is really tasty. It tastes better than the ones at restaurants. It is filled with love and care from the doctors. I'm really touched. To the nursing staff, the noodles mean something special. Now fully recharged, they're ready to serve their patients. <laughs> Yesterday was Tomb Sweeping Festival in Taiwan. It's a time when people burn paper money as offerings to their ancestors. As the practice causes air pollution, a group of Da'ai mothers went to the Guoguang Elementary School in Taipei to raise awareness among students of the environmental impact of burning joss paper. The volunteers said they hope the children will take what they learned home with them and convince their parents to rethink the tradition. Joss paper is burned during various festivals in Taiwan. Today, students are learning about the environmental impact of the practice. Perhaps some actual figures will help make it more real for the students. When you go tomb sweeping, you will burn things which give off carbon dioxide. It causes environmental pollution and acid rain. 
Die mothers don't just do storytelling at school, but also raise environmental awareness, especially around festivals that might involve unfriendly practices for the earth. We want to take the burden off our planet by having the kids take home the necessary knowledge. Never underestimate the role children play to help protect the future of our environment. With the price of petrol going up in Taiwan, residents have been forced to cut down on their travel expenses. In our next report, we meet city volunteer Chen Feng Zhu, who used to drive wherever she went, regardless of the distance. However, after hearing Master Zheng Yan's call for everyone to cut their carbon footprint, she decided to change her way of life. Stepping on the accelerator and off she goes for city volunteer Chen Feng Zhu. No matter how long or short the distance she was traveling, she used to always drive. All the time. I would drive all the time and get many tickets. Before, when I used to drive, I would get a fine every week. Reducing carbon footprint is not just a slogan, but an ideal that must be practiced in our daily life. Inspired by the master, Tim bought easy cards so she could take public transportation with her husband. At first, he wouldn't agree to the idea of taking the bus because he had never done so. Later, because I would always catch the bus, he started following me. Today, wherever the destination, Tim always takes the bus or MRT. When there are seats available, the volunteer sits down and seizes the time to practice sign language movements. Chen Feng Zhu says another benefit of taking public transportation is that she gets to save on parking fees and spend more time with her members. Arriving at the Taipei City chapter, Chen begins her day of volunteer work and happily makes a donation from the transportation expenses she saved. Like transportation costs and all expenses relating to reducing carbon emission, there is no way for me to count the exact amount, so I set up an online charity piggy bank. Facing rising petrol costs and inflation, everyone is forced to change their habits and cut down on expenses. Chen Feng Zhu has set a great example for others to follow. In the north district of Taichung in central Taiwan, city volunteers launched a cookery class to promote vegetarianism and zero waste. For example, a cold dish made from the skins of daikon, which is a kind of radish, is both delicious and nutritious. Some of the community residents who joined the class later signed up to Tsuji's volunteer training program. Peel a daikon and carrot, add some salt and hot peppers, a cold dish is done. The diced daikon can be used for soup. Nothing is wasted. For this pumpkin dish, cut the pumpkin into squares, add some butter and steam it. It is nutritious and healthy. In Taiwanese, pumpkin is called golden melon. We can cook the whole pumpkin. Nothing is wasted. It saves gas and is easy to make too. The cooking class teaches community residents how to make vegetarian dishes. Some residents even later joined Siji's volunteer training program. I have a chance to volunteer to serve others and do good deeds. Among the residents who joined the training program, Lutus sufferer Zhang Lishang also signed up. Due to her illness, she lives in melancholy. Thanks to the volunteers, however, she found happiness in the cooking class. I feel like I'm at home when I'm with these people. I'm very happy, so when I go home, I always bring happiness and new vegetarian recipes. Through the cooking class, residents not only exercise their cooking skills, but also gain life wisdom. In our next report, we bring you the amazing story of Huang Ting, a fifth grader from Taichung, Taiwan, who, when he was only three years old, was involved in an accident that left him paralyzed from the waist down. However, instead of leaving him bitter, Ting maintained a cheerful and mature outlook on life. Recently, he was made one of Taichung City's model students. His hands dexterously handling the Rubik's Cube, Huang Ting pays complete attention to the task at hand. <laughs> After every class, rating is swamped by onlookers. Wow. 
a star among its classmates and with an enthusiasm to match, Ray Ting has been paralyzed from the waist down since he was three and depends on a wheelchair to get to school. Taking Ray Ting out to enjoy the sun, Ray Ting's classmates get a chance to enjoy his courage and determination in life. With Ray Ting a model for many, it is no surprise that he was voted as one of the city's model students. He's not afraid of hardship. Whatever it is, he does his best to overcome the difficulty that he faces. Behind Ray Ting, helping him every step of the way is his father, Huang Changwen. Giving him massages and helping him to the bathroom, Wang Changwen's love is without limits. He has a hard time of it, so I really want to thank him. Every day he takes me to school and also picks me up. Ray Ting's condition has left him mature and wise beyond his years. Now he just needs to look at his father's face to know what he is thinking and will do his best to console him if necessary. He will look out for his older brother on our behalf. If his brother does something bad, he will say, Brother, you can't do that. You will make mom and dad sad. <laughs> In times gone by in Hakka villages in Taiwan, women would pickle vegetables and store them up for the winter. In Hakka communities in northern Pindong County, villagers stored up their vegetables in bottles. The tradition still goes on today, but as young people leave the villages, it's in danger of dying out. This has bugs, so there's less pesticide. I put it like this to drain the water. It's harder this way, so I turn it over. When it comes to salting and pickling vegetables, these elderly women from the hacker minority in Taiwan know all the tricks of the trade. This makes a really nice sound. Can you hear it? When the cabbage makes a crisp, crackling sound, it's ready to be stored in bottles. Ramming the vegetables down with the stick, the women squeeze out the remaining water. We give these to our children, friends and relatives. They're very happy and give them to their friends who think they're too good to eat. Bottled vegetables are a hacker specialty. The elderly women give them to their younger relatives who are working away from the village. Today they are a delicacy, but in the past, people used to bottle their leftover vegetables so they wouldn't go to waste. The leftover vegetables we couldn't eat were dried in the sun, so when there were no vegetables in the autumn, we had extra to eat. We did that every year, year after year. This 80-year-old, this 70-year-old, in fact, every hacker woman here in northern Pindong County knows how to pickle vegetables. I saw my grandmother do it. She sun-dried and rubbed them, squeezed out the water, squeezed them dry, added salt to pickle them, and put them in bottles. Everyone young or old loved them. This elderly woman says big hacker families of 40 to 50 people used to get through the winter on bottled vegetables. If I made soup, I needed two to three bottles of vegetables, two to three bottles to make a big pot of soup. I cooked it and the vegetables were soon gone. With so many people, that was the only way. Crisp, pickled vegetables are more than a hacker tradition. 
but a message in a bottle that keeps the younger generation of hacker people in touch with their roots. That link with hacker culture is something that one woman thinks will appeal to a wider public. Ms. Zhong Chiu Xiang from the Gaoshu Township says bottled vegetables are not known in her hacker community in the south of Pindong, but she learns the hard way how to make them from her mother-in-law who comes from the north of the county. Now she's marketing bottled vegetables to bring business opportunities back to her community. <laughs> I add sugar to balance the sourness. It smells good. Cooking them makes a delicious dish. So when we go back to my mother's home, we take some with us. We don't have this in South Pingdong. Although she and her husband are both members of the hacker minority, Zhong Chiu Xiang's community in South Pingdong do not bottle their vegetables. A great New Year dish is ready. When a mother-in-law works, the daughter-in-law has to follow. You have to watch and try to do it. You can't ask questions. For them, there's nothing to learn. You just do it. But when she does it, her vegetables don't go soggy. When we young people try, our first bottle always goes bad. Bottled vegetables are not the only thing Zhong Chiu Xiang's formidable mother-in-law can make. Jars of every size and shape covered in layers of cloth are hidden in corners around the house. This is how the frugal hacker women store pickled vegetables for winter. When Taiwan joined the WTO a decade ago, pressure from cheap imports led Zhong Xiaoxiang to look for traditional knowledge that could help her community survive. Every old person carries a treasure trove with them, but they don't think it's valuable. They think these things that are processed in the village are ordinary because they are used to them. But that's why we call them culture. From bottled vegetables to pickled turnips, dried jujubes and tofu curd, over 20 cultural specialties are processed in the village. If the old people don't make these things, they will die out. So I thought these things are highly valued elsewhere so they can be marketed. Zhong Chiu Xiang worked so hard to promote the village women's products that even her reticent mother-in-law had words to say. I told her she worked night and day. I told her she should quit. I said, who wants to go rushing around with me? <laughs>《To create job opportunities and bring young people back to the once dying village, the mother in law says she's now Zhong Chiu Xiang's biggest supporter. Finally, today the water repentance show in Hualien may be over, but Tsuji Elementary School students who want to keep on eating vegetarian food at home are being helped by their teachers who organized an event to educate their parents about the benefits of a meatless diet. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for watching Dire Headlines. Goodbye.